second episode of Facts to the Max. We are on the back of a victory over the Bradford Bulls, a derby victory um, after a memorable game at the Shea, 40 points to 18, Halifax coming out on top for the fourth time in a row against uh, Bradford, what a game that was. Now today we're going, to, uh, we're going to hear from Simon Griggs, we're going to hear from Jacob Fairbank, we're going to talk about the playoff picture, we're going to speak about the singer that was at the game. If you were at the Shea on the weekend you may have noticed there was a bit of music before the match as the, as the teams were walking out as well. Uh, we spoke with the singer and we have her thoughts. And there's a bit of an interesting fact about her um, as well. So stick around for that towards the end. Uh, but let's get into the thick of the action here. Halifax, 40 points to 18 victory over Bradford Bulls. I have to tell you something. The first 20 minutes of the match... Um, Three tries for Halifax, and I'm thinking this is turning into a procession. This is going to be an awful match report because it's going to be uh, an absolute walkover, 60 plus points. Or that, that was my first expectation after the first 20 minutes. Credit to the Bulls, though. They came back into the game. Or you could say Halifax took their foot off the gas somewhat. Um, and Bradford managed to get a couple of tries. But then obviously, just as they worked their way back into the game, Brad England gets... Um, a yellow card and he's sent to the sin bin and um, Lachlan warms in and immediately scores for the Panthers and um, you know how they have those little bits in the League Express where they say like a game-changing moment you have to probably put that there just as the momentum swung in Bradford's favor it swung again back in favor of Halifax because of that one yellow card and that immediate try uh, from Walmsley then as the second half began, Halifax kicked things off with a quick try. Bradford did respond, but Halifax um, made sure of the victory uh, and made sure of a memorable victory because, as, as I said, this is a fourth derby win over Bradford, consecutive win over Bradford. Um, they obviously won at the, the Summer Bash earlier this season. Uh, one uh, spectacularly, I think it was Louis Jouffre who scored that, that last gasp, last minute try in at Odsall. And obviously the season before that, uh, Halifax managed to, to, to win as well. 2016 was the last time that Halifax won um, uh, two regular season games, uh, two games in a regular season over Bradford. Uh, there was They didn't play against uh, them at the Summer Bash that year. Um, does that count for a stat? That's my question because, yes, they did beat them twice in the regular season, but then they lost in the Championship Shield um, in 2016. So I don't know. Do we count the Championship Shield as, as part of the regular season or not? That's that's one for the fans to decide. Nevertheless, that was the last time they sort of won the, the regular season uh, double over Bradford. The last time they won four in a row against the Bulls, 2015-2016. They won twice in 2015, towards the back end of 2015, and the first two in 2016. That was the last time Halifax won four in a row um, against Bradford. This victory, though, takes Halifax nine wins, nine home wins on the trot now at the Shea this season. Uh, a, a very impressive run of home games. Um, and one, and I, you know, I'll have another stat which backs that up even further because six of those nine wins have seen Halifax score 40 or more points. What's more, they haven't conceded 18 or more points at home since April, since that victory against Whitehaven. Well, they did concede 24, but they did come out on the winning side. So a very strong season at home for the Halifax Panthers. There's more stats. This is the fifth win in a row now, generally home or away for Halifax. Um, 18 from the last 20 games have been won by Fax, so a very, very strong campaign. You know, every might, everyone might point to that little bit uh, of a dip at the start of the season. Since then, Fax are flying. Um, 12 games now um, with, with a winning margin of over 20 points, so 12 wins from the, those last 18 have seen Halifax win by more than 20, 20 or more points, um, including that, obviously, Win uh, that latest win it over uh, the Bradford Bulls. Um, still the second best defence in the championship. Um, little old part time Halifax doing better than Featherston. Halifax conceded 414 points at this moment in time, while Featherston, with all their millions, 428 points conceded so far this season. No way of catching a leader, 196. So um, they will finish as the strongest defence uh, in the comp and 
Now let's move on to the reaction from Simon Griggs because he spoke after the match, gave some interesting insight on the two games coming up against Witness and uh, Feverston and uh, we also spoke about the fact that he has um, a number of players now that, um, coming back to the side from, from injuries, suspensions. The team is looking really strong. The squad is looking very strong at precisely the right time during the business end of the campaign. Here's what Simon Griggs had to say after the match. Well, um, mathematically speaking, it would be very hard for, for Bartley to catch you um, the third spot uh, with me taking an almighty point swing but what is your message to, to the team now heading into the final two games of the season to maintain the sort, oh, of, sort uh, of level? First message is look what's not playing you need to be good for me to make sure well for you to make sure you're keeping your position within the team that's the the difficult bit for me I suppose not difficult but they're the choice that's my job they're the choices I'll have to make to put the best team out there so the message yeah is Put your best foot forward and make sure you're in consideration. Don't put yourself out of contention to play more. You get you play all year. You know you miss a game against. Forget the opposition no matter. Someone away middle of the season. No one cares about it. At the end of the year, you care about it because these games are what everyone wants to play in. The first night of pre-season in October, sorry November, when it's freezing cold and all that, and you train hard all the way through. It's because you want to be part of this picture and. Yeah, I think that's, that's an obvious message, but also that OK is not good enough. Um, we've been pretty good in patches, but generally say just OK last couple of weeks. We need to keep going up um, to make sure we can uh, we can exploit the advantage we have of that. Hopefully in the third position, as you said, it's mathematically it's possible we could drop away from it, but it would take an almighty points, uh, points concession from us. And, Points scored for that, like, or whatever else it might be underneath us. Um, but yeah, we just try to focus on us, mate, for the last few, and hopefully just build that bit of form, get them combos right, because obviously, my G's missed a bit, Cavs missed a bit, and then Titus is still in the background ready to come and play, um, and Woodburn all as well, which, as, as much as our spine's gone well, I think, last couple of games, they've had a fair hand in the points we've scored and the shapes we've thrown, but I think Woody's, it's fair to say, well, in my eyes anyway, is probably the best fullback in comp. And, that little bit of um, confidence from having him back there, you know, your regular fullback, that bit of confidence from the connection our arms have had all year. And it would be nice to be able to throw him in the mix in the next couple of weeks and see see if I haven't got a really difficult decision to make. Yeah, you must be very pleased that, you know, come the end of the season, normally teams might be struggling with injuries, things like that, but you seem to have a, a wide range of selection in your, in your squad. I don't think there are too many. Yeah, we've many managed it out. well. Yeah. Um, I've said. I won't go into all, but the lads in the background have looked after the lads, but they've also bought in and looked after themselves because they want to achieve something. They've got a group of blokes who it's not a pub team, we're not turning them just for laughs, we're turning them to do something. Um, yeah, they've done well, and then obviously, like, some some blokes like Tibbs, uh, Tibbs would have been in the mix, he's been great this year. There's a lot to look forward to moving forward, but um, yeah, I think just making sure this group of blokes focus on them now is important. Those were the thoughts of uh, Simon Griggs, but we also uh, we also caught up with Jacob Fairbank after the match. Here is what he had to add um, after that victory against the Bradford Bulls. Uh, Jacob, just you know, um, a few from me, if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, what's it like playing in in a derby like this when the atmosphere is probably better than it has been all season and and uh, you know a few times in the game you know the two teams can come together but I guess that's part of the part of the pie, isn't it? Yeah, it's always a bit fiery when uh, the local derby. Isn't it? Um, for personal note, the Bradford games are my favourite favourite games, the ones that you look to uh, look for at the start of the season when the fixtures come out. And I, don't, I think the all occasions better. I think. Just, like I said, the crowds lift, the numbers are here, the louder. Uh, it's just a bit of an occasion, really, isn't it? So I really look forward to it. Witness, uh, Witness is, of course, next. Um, earlier in the season, Witness got the better of Halifax here at home, and last season as well, that your trip to Witness wasn't that great. Is it time for a bit of revenge next weekend? It's got to be, hasn't it? Uh, we can't let our form drop going into the playoffs, obviously. After that, we've just got a fair number into the playoffs, haven't we? Like I said, we pipped us at home to start of the season, uh, which is kind of hurt us down the line if we are pushing for second and from last year they put a good score on us, didn't they? So we've got a bit of a point to prove and not just that we need to keep rolling. 
You're playing Witness and Feverston in the last two games of the regular season. Would you say, you know, playing two quite, you know, tough, high caliber opponents is the, the perfect way to round off just before the just before the playoffs? Or would you prefer playing somebody else that perhaps is not on the, as, as, as playing as uh, as good as uh, Featherstone and Witness at the moment? I think we need to keep challenging self, testing self and Witness away and Feather home. It's not, there's not many more tougher games, is there? So <clears throat> hopefully if we can get two, two more wins on the board, it, Puts his real great state for the playoffs. And just lastly, uh, Jacob, looking at this team right now, is this a team that could potentially go on to do something special this season, perhaps go all the way in the playoffs? Do you see that potential in this team? Yeah, we all we all believe so. We've got we've got a great squad, haven't we? Look uh, look at the boys who were unfortunately set out today. Some great talent on the touchline. <clears throat> so his strength in depth and his belief at the minute is great, and um, hopefully we can show that on the field and keep going. Those were the thoughts of uh, Jacob Fairbank following that victory for Halifax against the Bradford Bulls. Now, let's turn our attention to the playoff picture because things are becoming very, very interesting as teams jostle for that position, uh, well, from third to six, let's face it, not the top two. That's not going to change. Lee Centurion's currently top of the table in the championship, 48 points. Featherston second, 43 points. Those two teams... Um, they won't play in the first week of playoffs. They'll move on straight to the semi-finals. Third to six. This is where the important thing is. Here's the situation. Halifax, currently third, with 38 points to their name. They're going to close out the campaign first against Witness away, then against Featherston at home at the Shea. Batley are currently fourth, following their win uh, against the Dewsbury Rams. They've got 34 points, four points behind Halifax. They end the season, well, we'll get to that later, actually. So they're four points behind Halifax, meaning if they win their next two games, they will have 38 points. And if Halifax would, for some reason, lose their last two games, both teams would be on 38 points. Who goes through on uh, if, if such a scenario would play out? Well, it would go down to points difference. The points difference at the moment, Halifax on plus 369, Batley on 217. So a, a point swing of 152 would be needed for Batley to somehow steal third place from Halifax. Is that possible? Mathematically, of course. Realistically, Batley are ending the season at home against Bradford, Fair enough, maybe they can get a win. But then they play away against the Lee Centurions. Um, and, you know, getting a, a win against Lee is hard enough. But when you require a 152-point uh, swing, yeah, realistically speaking, Halifax should finish third. Bah, some incredible uh, scenario. Halifax will most likely play the team in sixth which is currently York. They've got 32 points at this moment in time. They finished the season against Newcastle and Workington. The team in fifth, though, is Barrow. They've got 33 points, so one more than York and one below Batley. They finished the season against Dewsbury at home and London away. Very, very complicated. Well, not complicated. Very, very interesting situation, you have to say, because York playing... All right. Let's face it, York are not playing the best rugby league at this moment in time. They're not in they're not the, the top form. But they're playing the Newcastle side, which are having some big problems. And they're playing the Workington side, which are relegated and have had a completely a dreadful season. So you'd expect them to take four points, surely, right? That would take them up to 36. Barrow, on the other hand, they play Dewsbury at home. Again, with Dewsbury going down, you'd expect Barrow to put on a, a show and win. Then again, we saw Dewsbury today against um, today. I'm recording this on Monday. We saw Dewsbury against Batley put on a, a you know a hard display, and then they're playing against London away. You two you know potential tough games here for Barrow, especially the London away because the Broncos have been impressing me uh, as this season has come to a close. Batley on the other hand, as we mentioned, playing Bradford and Lee, so very very tight. Couple of points separate fourth place Batley between the uh, uh, sorry and sixth place York City Knights, meaning it's all to play for, which is good for the competition. There's still you know two games to go. The the teams continue to jostle for position as Halifax. Well, they, I'm they're not going to obviously sit back and watch the rest unfold. There's still business to be done. There's still bragging rights against Witness from what happened last season and earlier this season. They'll want to impress um, uh, against the Vikings and obviously Featherston as well. That last game of the season. 
for Halifax against Featherston could be a real indicator. Because let's face it, if Halifax finish third, they go to their uh, quarterfinal game. Let's, fa- let's say it's against York. Halifax have done well against York this season. Let's just say, um, I know we're, we're speculating here, we're going, we're going uh, looking ahead into the future. But let's just say, for the sake of the argument, they beat York and they play Featherston. How crucial would that last game of the regular season be in preparation for a potential semi-final against Featherston Rovers? My opinion, that could be huge. It could that last game of the regular season could be a massive indicator because you know I've spoke to a lot of uh, Halifax fans after games, before games. The main topic of conversation is usually this: Are Halifax capable of beating Featherston? Um, not only at the end of the regular season, but in a potential clash in the playoffs. And let's face it, it's just one game. It's just one game. Anything is possible. Whether it's over at Featherston, whether it's at the Shea, anything is possible. Being Lee, again, a very, very tough ask. And we saw what happened last time Halifax went head-to-head with Lee. Um, it was a tough watch, let's face it. But again, this is one match. One match. You never know. There could be a red card in the opening five minutes for Leo or Featherston. Could be something could go down. A sin bin, an injury, a key injury, a momentum uh, switching situation, um, a breakthrough from from Woody or Jouffre or somebody. You never know what could happen in a single match. Over the course of the season, fair enough. Lee and Featherston have dominated, but in one game. Anything could happen. I know we're looking too far ahead. Uh, but as um, a fan of sports, it would be incredible to see a part-time team like Halifax go all the way in the competition. And you have to say, of all the teams left in the playoff picture, Halifax are, in my opinion, without doubt, the, the team best equipped to tackle Featherston and Lee. And I don't think there's much argument in that. Um, but I'm really looking forward to seeing how these playoffs pan out um, as teams continue to jostle for position. And we'll see what sort of um, strategy Lee and Featherston take towards uh, the playoffs. You know, these last two regular season games, will they decide to rest players? Because nothing is going to change at the table. They could might as well rest some players. Or are they going to look and you know, ahead of the players, start preparing. You know, Simon Griggs was speaking earlier, uh, sorry, a couple of weeks ago about peaking at the very right time. So I guess you don't want to go into the last two remaining uh, games of the regular season and 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 play a weakened side, and um, only for then to having to build up that momentum again, um, in your most important game of the campaign. So it'll be interesting the strategies that are taken by the clubs um, in this business end of the campaign. Right, it's time for the final, final um, topic of the show on Facts to the Max. And you may have seen, during the game against Bradford, during, before the game against Bradford, there was a singer on the field singing the players out. Uh, I believe it was a song from the Gladiator. I don't know. I'm a jazz man. I'm not really a, uh, a, a fan of... of um, of other music, but uh, Chloe Beth was the name of the singer. Uh, I managed to catch up with her before the match, and you may be surprised by some of the things that she says in the interview, especially by who is one of her relatives, one of her close relatives. It might take you by surprise. Here's what she had to say. Chloe Beth, we are here at the Shea, head of Halifax Bradford Bowls. I've heard you singing in the hospitality suite, but you'll be singing out here uh, as the teams are coming out. Can you tell me more about it today, what you're doing here? So I'm going to sing, I've just sang, yeah, like you say, three songs in the banqueting suite to entertain as the guests had the three course meal. And then out here, I'm going to sing three songs and then I'm going to sing as the rugby players run out and a, a really epic song. So I picked four really special songs today. I think everyone will really enjoy them, hopefully. I'm sure they will, but can you tell us about uh, a little bit about yourself? About me? Yeah, yeah. Um, well... Um, how long have you been singing? How long I've been singing yeah. for a fair few years now. I do it full time, I do it for a living. I'm a classically trained singer. I, um, I write my own songs as well. They're all on Spotify and Apple Music. Um, I do busking all around the country and I sing at weddings and events. Um, I went to university in Manchester. Shall I look at you or? You can look at me, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I went to a um, university in Manchester and I studied music and I loved uni. Um, so yeah, here I am. And I'm from Halifax, I'm from North Arham. 
Uh, but I lived in Manchester for a few years when I was at uni, but yeah, I'm back in Halifax now. Um, I'm hearing and I saw already that your dad, former uh, Bradford Bulls player, can you tell us a little bit about that? Because you say you're from Halifax, your dad is a former Bradford player, are your interests so when it comes to the game a little bit, you know, 50-50, tell, tell me about it, you know? It's you know what, that's interesting actually, because yeah, like you said, my dad did play for Bradford Bulls for a long time, he was a prop forward, and... Can you tell us his I, name, by the way? John Hamer. So I always support, I was brought up with rugby, I was brought up supporting the Bulls. I'm sweating, it's warm, isn't it? It's boiling. Yeah, so I, I supported the Bulls for a long time, as I was a kid, because my dad played for them, obviously, naturally I'm going to support them. And then now I'm here singing... Um, you know the Panthers game. So I, I mean, what am I meant to say? I don't mind who win. I don't mind who wins. I suppose. <laughs> I don't know. It'll um, it'll go to the most deserved team. You know, I, I spot them both. Have you watched your dad when he was playing? Were you following him around the country? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I watched him at Wembley. Yeah, I watched him. I went to all his games. Um, I've always loved rugby, but it's because I've been brought up with it. So, you know, I prefer rugby over football any day. I can't stand football players. Um, I prefer rugby players. Um, so, yeah, I do like rugby. It's just engraved in me because it was part of my childhood. Um, so, yeah, the, this, the fact I'm singing at this game in particular, Bradford Bulls vs Halifax, means a lot to me because of obviously my dad played the Bulls and me being local from Halifax in this stadium. So, it's yeah, it means a lot to me this game and to be performing here means even more, so chuffed to be here. And just last of all, any fans, especially from Halifax who heard you, who heard you today, where can they find you? Where can they book you for any weddings coming up or any shows? Where can they see you on social media? Just but plug away if you want. Yeah, plug away. I don't, you know what, I'm not, I'm, I don't usually plug, so it's a nice opportunity. So, um, you know, I am available for weddings, events, anything, christenings, I've seen at funerals as well, seen at anything, because uh, I'm classically trained. Um, and my Facebook page is Chloe Beth H1, or just Facebook Chloe Beth the singer. Um, all my songs that I've written are on Spotify, they're more current, there's like, you know, there's some techno, there's some pop, there's some alter alternative um, indie sort of music. So yeah, Spotify, Chloe Beth, um, Facebook. I've deleted my Instagram because I just didn't want to look at it anymore. I don't like I don't like being on social media. I like to be off my phone. I like to be free. So I did delete Instagram. Um, I had quite a following on there, but it's I just I, I didn't want to look at it anymore. Not my profile. Just get sucked into social. I don't think it's. Uh, yeah, it's, I don't particularly like it, so, but I've still got my Facebook, so yeah, the best place to search would be Facebook, Chloe Beth, or Chloe Beth the singer. Just message me on there if you want anything. <laughs> Those were the thoughts of uh, Chloe Beth. I'm just wondering whether that may have inspired her to come watch the rest of the season unfold. I doubt we'll see her at Witness, uh, but who knows, maybe we'll see her at the next home game um, against Featherston. You know, if I was a a neutral fan, and I just stumbled upon this game. I, came, I, I would love to see the, uh, that game against Bradford, that, I mean, the atmosphere there, that would inspire me to come again, I'll be honest with you. And 2,703 fans, that was the biggest turnout at the Shea this season. Um, and let's just hope that goes up and we cross the 3,000 barrier mark um, against Featherston at home, because let's face it, the, the team deserves it. This is probably, you know, speaking, again, speaking to fans, they say the same thing. This is one of the best Halifax teams they've seen in 10 years time, something like that, in a decade, the boys deserve it, let's see a 3,000 figure uh, crowd against Featherston, uh, but before that, they've got to get the job done against the Witness Vikings. Thank you very much everybody for watching, thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank you.